As a beginner in golf, the one thing that you should have in mind as a beginner in golf is gratitude. And it might be hard for you to get that, right? It might not make a lot of sense. But you have to remember that one of the greatest parts about meeting the future love of your life whenever you do, maybe you haven't yet, is when you look at them, you wonder how many times will I see them again? Will it be, you know, is it, is it going to work out? Or are they going to be there? Or is it, am I going to see them for a year? Am I going to see them a thousand times? Ten thousand times? Am I going to see them a million times? Are they going to be the last thing I see? So golf has that in it, if you let it. But the great thing about romance and golf is you have to ponder the entirety of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have to completely understand that you don't know the end of the book you're writing of your life. So as a beginner, what a wonderful position to be in. You're just playing a game. You have low expectations. It's just a puzzle. A child learning to walk, play. It's a new set of experiences. So Bo was there at the beginning of my romance with golf. And it taught me to know that I know enough to know that I will never know enough about really anything. About life, about golf, about you, the viewer at home. So try to keep that somewhere in your brain as you take the club back and as you watch the ball fly, wherever it goes, wherever it goes. Not just on the fairway, but wherever, even if it goes between your legs. If you can keep in mind that I don't know enough, but I'm here and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the opportunity to present itself for me to learn something. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome to the 33rd Epic. We're on hole seven of Beau Rivage. Gotten a late start. This is probably the most tense. Everybody's tense and mad. It seems like at each other in the world. Maybe it's ooh, coronavirus. Massive, massive shot, nice. Can still cut the tension out here with a knife. We're on hole number eight, the hardest hole. And I just want to dedicate this round to Wayne, who gave me $20 the other day, he didn't know me. I showed up at the Muni to play with Dan. I was talking to the starter about not having my wallet. Wayne, Mr. Wayne was on the uh, putting green and he heard me say I didn't have a wallet. Here, take this. Give me 20 bucks. One of the nicest things that someone's ever done for me. Changed my outlook on life that day. I wish I could hold on to that, but of course I quickly lost that. Oh, oh yeah. That's where you want to be. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Nice shot. <laughs> Perfect. Right down the middle. Oh yeah. What a shot. Two in a row. Justin with the pivotal shot to two stroke lead. Front nine or back nine at Beau Rivage? Back or, nine. Back nine? If you had 10 rounds, how would you split them between Mason Bro, Echo, and Beau Rivage? The three original courses. Six ever. rounds at Echo. Three rounds at Mason Burrow, one round at Beau Rivage. Wow. Dan? What are the questions? Ten rounds between Mason Burrow, Echo, and Beau Rivage. Ten rounds at Echo, none at the other. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like it. How, how about you? What do you think? Uh, Ten rounds. Mason Burrow, Echo, Bo. Go. Six at Echo. 
to it, Mason Bro to it. Oh, Bo. okay. Yeah. Even. Even for Mason Bro. And, and Bo. Yeah. When they were in prime shape, they're, they're cool courses. I would love to play Mason Bro now because it was so difficult then. Yeah. And we're so much better now. So yeah. I'd like to see how we play. Yeah, if only they were open. So we got to enjoy this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's the last one standing, basically. <laughs> yeah. Right last one standing. If this one goes away, we'll be, we'll be doomed. Sure. <laughs> I had a double. Down by two with five holes left. Yeah. Justin. Stroke in the last three, which gives us hope. Yeah. But Justin has one more stroke in hole. He's not stroking all three? Or Alan is, right? One of them has to be. Just on 17. Okay. Justin's on fire. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be a good ending. Stay tuned. Hit that like button, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome viewers at home to the final six hole recap of the 33rd Epic Championship at Beau Rivage. I'm going to take you through the final six holes where this championship was decided. WTE down by two, goes into hole 13 trying to focus, trying to come back. And we leave the video feed where the tides completely turn uncharacteristically in WTE's favor. GTZ records a quadruple bogey here on hole 13 while WTE comes in strong with the par swinging that two shot deficit into a two shot lead. Here you can see hole 13 from above. It's a short par five with a partially blind tee shot, almost always blind second shot and those condos on the right have a magnetic effect on the ball, which Justin experienced himself nearly killing a little child. The little boy was able to find his ball though and gave it back to Justin. You just don't see a collapse like this often out of GTC, usually with a lead. They don't let the other team back in it, so on to hole 14. It's a short par four, the narrow downhill tee shot. The pin can be tucked behind the sand on this incredibly narrow green, but today was in the easier position on the right. WT came in with a bogey, while GTZ continued to falter and got a double bogey, so WTE extending its lead to three with four holes left. Hole 15 is a uphill par three, usually playing about 150 yards. Carl from WTE hits an incredible tee shot to within a foot nearly recording an ace. They would tap that in for birdie while GTZ would come out with a par. So WTE keeps extending its lead now to four strokes with three holes left onto hole 16, which is a long par four with a risk reward second shot. It's requiring you to risk going over that water on the second or laying up for an easier approach to the uphill green. This hole is really hard guys and Dan from WTE comes through with a gross bogey net par while GTZ comes out with a gross double bogey net bogey so Dan putting his foot here on GTZ's throat with an incredible hole extending WTE's lead to five strokes with two holes left. WTE would maintain this advantage easily through the final two holes and would cut the series deficit to only three matches now. The rest of the season will be interesting to see if GTZ can regain their dominant form or if WTE is able to stay hot and catch up to their rivals. Now what will I remember from this day? I will remember going to the beach beforehand and Caitlin getting a ticket for drinking. I will remember getting my juices flowing after chipping in for par on the par 3 hole 5 and Justin saying it only went in because it went off his ball marker. I'll remember Dan yelling, fuck Beau Rivage, I remember why I don't play here anymore on that same hole five, but then regaining his composure to carry WTE with a net par, a net birdie, and a net par on three of the last four holes on the front. I'll remember Justin playing so well, pushing GTZ into the lead through 12 holes, 
and pushing me to possibly shoot the greatest round of my life. I'll remember Alan struggling with his game, but still out there cheering everyone on, searching for his swing, which I know he will find soon enough. So until then, we'll throw it down to Dottie at the Hick Challenge. Second annual Hick Challenge. Five dollar buy-in. Justin on the tee, hole number. <laughs> oh, one left. oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> the first time Allen's club has been in competition, he won last time with the Peerless defending champion. He was born in the wrong era. <laughs> this is his era. Ooh, oh, oh yeah. it's down there. Oh, in the bunker. Something to, to something to beat. Yes, please. If you can beat a bunker shot, it's gonna be tough to beat. A man oh. born in the wrong area. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Congratulations!